Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Maximize Manhood Men Study. I hope that you all have been enjoying this. I hope you take this and apply it and share it. I'm Minister Peyton Moore of 66 Books of Truth Ministries, and I am your instructor, and I am so glad to be here, and I hope that you take this Maximize Manhood uh, course and you share it, and you share it, and you share it with your brother, with your nephew, with your cousins, with your next door neighbor, with your uh, co-worker, with your best friend. Hey, God needs strong men in these tough times here on this earth. We need to be strong men to lead our homes, to be a husband. We need to be strong men to help guide our children, to help be leaders in our communities, in our church, and in our job. Even strong men in government. This is what we need. So today we're going to be talking about fellowship of the unashamed. Fellowship of the unashamed. And that's chapter 13, which is the final chapter. But I'm going to open up with some scriptures to kind of give us an open, more open dialogue of where we're going with this. Because there are a lot of men... You are sh you are ashamed to say that you are a, that you are a Christian. You are ashamed to say that you are a person who is identified with Jesus Christ. And I wonder why. So today we're going to open up with some scriptures. I'm going to start with 2 Timothy uh, chapters 1 verses 8 through 11. And it says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to the works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Now we're going to go to Romans uh, 1 16 Romans 1 16 and it says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jews first and also the Greek do you understand what's going on there I hope you do Luke 9 9 26 says for whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the son of man, will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Do you understand that? That is Luke 9, 26. Now let's go to Mark uh, 8, 38. Mark 8, 38. And it goes on to say, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the son of man, also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Now, let's go over here to Matthew 10, 38. No. 1033 1033 it goes on to say but whoever denies me before men i will also deny before my father who is in heaven powerful so if you deny jesus christ jesus christ is going to deny you before his father. Chapter 13 is talking about the fellowship of the unsh unashamed. The fellowship of the unashamed. It's a story talking about a, uh, uh, they was on an Australian ministry for men in Australia. And there was a former football player who spoke 
at this event. He was a former football player of the University of Southern California. His name was Tom Sertanak. Tom Sertanak, if I'm pronouncing that right. He addressed the men in a way, and he was talking basically, he was saying, man, where are your kahunas? Where are your balls? Why are you not standing up? For Jesus Christ. Why are you not. Being the salt. And the light. Of this world. Why are you not. Leading in your home. Why are you not. Leading in your community. Why are you not. Leading in your church. Why are you not. Leading in on your job. Or in government positions. Why are you not. Standing up being a representative for Jesus Christ. Why is basically what he was saying as you sum this up. Now, it sounded kind of harsh. It sounded kind of rude about man. You got to have testicles to be a man. Wow. That, that's pretty rough, ain't it? Where are you? Why, why are you hiding? Oh, you're hiding in sin. Oh, you're hiding behind sin. Your pride is in the way. You don't want nobody to know that you follow Christ. You don't want nobody to know that you are identified with Christ. Ed Cole says, real men, we need real men to stand for right, law, order. And above all, godliness in the day and the hour that we're living in right now. Right now. Where are you? He told you that this book, Strong Men in Tough Times, wasn't for the lazy. It wasn't for the hypocrites. It's for real men. This whole maximized manhood course is for real men. So if you are looking at the video or you're attending the class, that means that you want to be a real man because if you didn't want to join in, you wouldn't be here. Because only real men can take this class and complete it and stick with it and not fall away from it. Only real men. Today, Ed Cole says, I am not angry. I am not an angry man. I'm not mad at the world, my father or government. He's not mad. He's not an angry man. He's not mad at the world. He's not mad at his father or the government. He says, I'm not angry with people, but I'm angry with attitudes. I'm angry with mediocrity. I'm angry with myself for my sins. I, and I repent publicly right now as I privately did before. I am angry at the cowardice of men who do not have enough backbone, enough guts to take a stand for Jesus Christ today, the one who died on the cross for our sins. I am angry at the spirit of proud men who rise up to riot and stoop down in the sedition of to topple men of God from the pulpit. I am angry at the jealous ministers who can't stand to see others succeed. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of ministers out here. They, 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 they don't want to see the other brother succeed. They don't want you to bring this maximized manhood class into their church and show them up. And the men and the women going to be saying, man, how come we haven't been had this class here? You've been letting us sit in here struggle. Man, we could have been taking this class and we could have been leaders in the church. We could have been leaders in our home. We could have been leaders in our community. But you withheld this information from us. You didn't want that brother to come into the church, into our church, to give us information on how to be men of God, how to be leaders. Because you was afraid as a pastor, if you let a brother come into your church from the outside with a program like Maximize Manhood, what it would do is show you up. To show you the weak man that you really are. 
because the problem is with a lot of pastors and leaders, they want to feel so important. They want to stand out and they want to dominate the females in the church. This is why you don't want this program in your church. I'm just calling you out. And I'm angry at the way men tuss tuss the fresh method that does not fit their mold yet fear to deny the works of God and its results. I am angry at the complacency that lulls that lulls men to into accepting uh, that they uh, accepting less than than what Christ paid for at Calvary. I am angry at the deceit that makes men think remorse or regret are the same as repentance. I am angry at soft-spirited men who let abortionists take millions of dollars of subsidies from the federal government to teach their children safe sex, how to use condoms, and how to uh, get abortions without parents' permission or consent. I am angry at the arrogancy of the media who pay scoffers millions of dollars to sit down and belittle Jesus Christ, promote, promote and encourage lawlessness, at the same time condemn Christian ministers for the money that they raise to get people off of drugs, restore marriages, and rescue lives from the very... Whew, this, is, this, this, this is deep. And Cole say he's angry, and I'm angry right now too. I am angry at the covenants in the hearts of men that motivates them to give only to ministries that bless them and not to those who are on the front line of Jesus Christ. You want to give to those popular ones, the one that's not even on the front line for Jesus Christ. There's something wrong with that picture. Yes, he says, I am angry. said he's angry. He's angry. There is a time for righteous anger. Jesus felt and exhibited it when he found money lenders in his father's temple. Doing so, he modeled the righteous anger that is acceptable in God's sight. There are money lenders today who are ripping off the church, not only financially, as some would assume, but by lulling, lulling, used to slumber while the nations are dying. Hmm. There are board members who have no respect for the Lord anointed ministers, bitter church members who stir up dissensions and arguments and confusion with no discernment of that which is holy Ignorant preachers who call the Bible wrong, fundamentalists, believers, bigots, hateful so-called believers who kill prophets with their words, thinking that they are God, that thinking that they are doing God a service. Born again people who let double mindedness draw them into this false prophet stuff, who deceive them, who give them this crazy theological things that has nothing to do with the Bible. You just want to hear a message or give a message that tickle the ear of a person. We need some more Daniels. We need some more Daniels to stand up against these evil spirits. We need some more Daniels who will not compromise with these evil spirits. See, today, compromisers will lose their lives in these peerless times in more ways than one. They will lose them spiritually, financially. Their marriages will be destroyed socially. And not only just spiritual death, but a lot of physical death will come upon you. God's call is the true manhood, which is Christ-likeness. His call to men is not to count their lives dear, but to count Jesus as more worthy than life itself. Today, man, what you must say right now, I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. 
The die has been cast. The decisions has been made. I have stepped over the line. I won't look back. I won't let up. I won't slow down. I will not go back. I won't be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished. I am done with living low. Sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, uh, colorless dreams, tame visions, cheap giving. I am no longer, I no longer need a prosperous position. I no longer need to be popular. I no longer need to be known. I don't need to be first. I don't need to be at the top. I don't need to be re praised. I don't need to be rewarded. Because right now, I live by faith. Lean on his presence. Walk with patience. Live by prayer and labor with power. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are very few. My God is reliable and my mission is very clear. I cannot be bought. I will not compromise. I will not detour. I will not be lured away. I will not turn back. My mind will not be deluded and I will not delay. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table with my enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity. I don't need all of that because I will not give up. I will not shut up. I will not let up. I will not slow up until I have stored up, stayed up, prayed up, paid up, spoken up. For the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Be a man of God. A member of the fellowship of the unashamed. Raised to new life by Jesus Christ. Have the spirit of Daniel. And dare man who knows his God. A daring man who knows his God. A daring man who knows his God. And does exploits to glorify his name. Start this day. I'm going to be a strong man in these tough times.